Well, University of Idaho students are preparing to return to the classroom tomorrow for the spring semester. It will be the first time that they're on campus since police arrested a suspect in the murder of four students back in November. Crime News' Nicole Hernandez is joining us from the newsroom right now. So, Nicole, what is the university saying that they're doing to make students feel safe as they return to campus? So Channing, Tim, U of I will still be offering students counseling and private security as the semester starts. And for some, this will be their first time back on campus since those murders. Some students will be staying remote as the semester starts. The university says on campus security will not be as heightened as they've been for the past two months, though, as their police, of course, arrested that suspect. They say the change most students will notice will be less police patrols on campus. And University Vice President Tori Lawrence says the university is working on new classes for student safety. We have a lot of different programming um, that's being developed right now around safety and security. Everything from uh, self-defense, there's been an interest in that. Moscow Police, Latah County Sheriff's deputies and state troopers will still be on campus as the semester starts, just not as many. The university says they will keep revisiting security as the semester continues and they will still be providing students those counseling and grief services. Lawrence says, of course, Moscow is not immune to violence, but says it is still a safe place for students to return to school. In the newsroom, Nicole Hernandez, Crump 2 News. Meanwhile, WSU students returned to class yesterday for the first time since the arrest of the suspect, who happened to be a Ph.D. candidate at the school. Before his arrest, WSU students had no idea the suspect was on campus with them. While some students remain on edge, others at WSU feel reassured knowing the suspect is now in custody. I definitely do feel a lot safer. I mean, I do have pepper spray on me at all times just for that extra bit of protection, but... It's definitely a lot better coming back knowing that he's caught and people are looking out for you all the time. Before students return to campus, the university reiterated the safety and security resources available, including Coog Safe Rides, which offers a free safe ride to and from campus, along with a free walking service with WSU cadets in the evening hours on campus. In our effort to bringing you more to every story, Krem 2 spoke with the suspect's Pennsylvania public defender. Our Janelle Finch shares what she learned from that lawyer about working with a high-profile client. Jason Labar says he first met his client at the Monroe County Correctional Facility. Ordinary, average type guy. He says the first thing he said to the suspect was, don't tell me anything about the case. Don't tell me any facts. That's information for your Idaho attorney. And then I explained to him, you know, essentially the extradition proceedings. And he was very calm. He was aware of what was going on. He was aware of the murders. He says his client was intentional about what was said on his behalf in the statement to the public. The statement that was written was written by myself and my office, uh, but the, the exonerated, the eager to be exonerated was his. He specifically said eager to be exonerated rather than he was innocent or something like that. Now. Proving his innocence is in someone else's hands. Kootenai County Public Defender Ann Taylor. When I spoke to Attorney Taylor, uh, I essentially said, tag, you're it. Labar says after reading the affidavit, he says his client's defense team may be able to poke holes in an upcoming trial. So you have transfer DNA on the teeth. Um, transfer DNA can stay on an item for up to at least a year. Uh, if it's on if no one else touches it or it's unblemished or something like that. So, I mean, that doesn't place him at the scene on the day of the crime. Certainly it's suspicious that he turns his cell phone off, but cell phone tower pings um, are unreliable at best. Uh, if it pings off a tower, you're talking that the individuals within 20 mile radius of that tower. Labar says for those invested in this case, this is just the beginning of a long process ahead. As things continue to develop, he says the public should view this case with an open and objective mind. Labar says he's continuing to work with the suspect's family in Pennsylvania, but will no longer be working directly with his former client now that he's in Idaho. Now the suspect, Brian Koberger, is due back in court this week. Here's what we can expect next in these court proceedings. A status conference hearing schedule for this Thursday at 8 a.m. Now that is typically an opportunity for the judge to make sure that both sides are on track, working cooperatively, and are prepared for the trial. The suspect's preliminary hearing is not scheduled just yet, but it must happen within the next week and a half. 
Meanwhile, memorials for the victims continue to grow. Now, the Tulip Farm where Ethan Chapin worked at growing up is working on a way to honor him. The Tulip Valley Farms in Western Washington says it will be selling a tulip bulb mix called Ethan's Smile. It says later this spring people can buy the bulbs and all the proceeds will support a memorial garden and scholarship fund in Ethan's name. The Tulip Farm says they will have more details very soon on when the bulbs will be available to buy. We will continue to bring you the very latest on the murder investigation here on Crem 2 News. If you want more of our in-depth coverage so far, just text us the word Idaho to the number 509-448-2000 and we will send a link right to your phone.